Sunday the 13th of December. Who thought we'd see, actually be here after all the shenanigans of this year? Day 278 of the pandemic, Sunday number 41. 41 Sundays and we're still going strong. So next week we've got um, the outdoor carol service. Uh, it may be weather dependent. I mean, the weather this morning was atrocious, but I think it's cleared up now. So we'll see how that goes. It's going to be in the drama block, outside the drama block, like we did the summer ones uh, in the summer. Uh, so we'll do that next Sunday at 11. So what happened today in history? Let's go back. This is all quite recent stuff. 1966, the fabulous Clive Lloyd made his cricket debut for the West Indies. Fantastic cricketer. Anyone remember Clive Lloyd? Yeah? Brilliant guy. Uh, 1989, Driving Miss Daisy was released today. One of the best and uh, probably most controversial films ever done. Fantastic. With Morgan Freeman, I believe. Was it Morgan Freeman was the driver? I think he was, wasn't he? Uh, 1990, a year later, F.W. Clerk met with Nelson Mandela to discuss ending apartheid for the first time because old Nelson had been released. And 1996, Kofi Annan became Secretary General of the United Nations today. Lots of politics in there, isn't there? A Beatles trivia, number one today, 1967, was Hello, Goodbye by the Beatles, and it stayed on for Christmas number one. So Hello, Goodbye by the Beatles is a Christmas number one. Uh, in celebration of Clive Lloyd, I've got some cricket jokes here. My wife says she's leaving me due to my obsession with cricket. I'll be honest, it's not me for six. Can I hear the groans? Oh, claps. Wow, thank you. <laughs> I've been trying to think of a name for my cricket shop, but I'm stumped. I had to tell my neighbour this morning that I hit her cat. She asked, is it bad? I said, well, it broke my cricket bat in half. That's quite a sick joke about cats, as well as cricket. So I will I'll move swiftly on from that, because that maybe wasn't very funny. Right, I'm on screen. Because I'm sitting in the vineyard. Right. Uh, it is nearly five past eleven. Keep people coming in. Come and join us, guys. Grab yourself some seats and a bubble. Lovely to see you. Ah, oh, Jake and Harry. Lovely to see you. Fantastic. We've got some kids here today. Kids work is going to be fantastic. So we've got uh, two songs, and the kids go out, and then a third, or they're saying four, three. As, as it's carols, the kids can stay, can stay four, three songs. And youth and kids will go out after the songs today. So youth down the one-way system, onto the left, and kids out that door up to the stage area. I think the kids all in, all in together today, as we have a slightly fewer number. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we've prepared a lot for today. It's nice to see people turn up uh, and actually, you know, you want to be here as much as we do, so that's fantastic. And if you're on Zoom, welcome this morning. Uh, we can't see you, but you can see us. So hello to all the Zoomers. Good morning. Why don't you stand up and we'll pray before we start. The Christmas story is all about God with us. God with us forever. He couldn't stand being away from us any longer, so he actually came in person to be with us to be vulnerable amongst us, to be powerful amongst us, to be joyful amongst us, and just to simply love us. He loves, he loves you this morning. He loves everything about you. Whatever you've done this week, good or bad, if you're on the naughty list or the good list, it really doesn't matter because he loves you just as much as yesterday and the day before. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love. We thank you for just that lovely, lovely feeling that you are with us and you want to be with us and you want to enjoy us. You, you enjoy our company, Lord, and we enjoy yours this morning. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord.
if you're a uh, guitarist, Carol's about the worst thing ever. <laughs> so uh, bear with me.
Okay, just before the kids go out, we have a prize for the best Christmas jumper. Back, sorry, there, sorry. Prize for the best Christmas jumper. 
goes to Alex Curry. Where's Alex Curry? Come and take your reindeer. Don't know why you hate Brussels sprouts though, they're lovely. Yum, yum, yum. Can I have yours at Christmas Day? <laughs> okay, we also have uh, an adult's Christmas jumper winner, and that of course is Roz, who has come as a Christmas tree today, so I couldn't really give it to anybody else. She pulled the stops out. Well done, Roz. You can have the biscuits. And there's also a prize for the uh, guess the mask. Guess who's behind the mask in a sec. We'll do that in a sec. Okay. Uh, kids, if you go and gather um, around crocodile-like with Roz at the back and Vix. And uh, youth, if you follow Andy down the one-way corridor. That'd be great. Yes, youth is year six and above. Kids is year six and below. Year six, you can choose which way you go, depending on uh, who your friends are, basically, isn't it? You want to be with your friends. <clears throat> Can you bring up the notices? <clears throat> okay, don't say yet, but at the end of the notices, we will ask you who is behind the mask. You might recognise the person uh, by the dog, actually. The dog is quite famous. So who is behind the mask? Hold your tongues for a sec. This is our special Christmas event for children and families. We have our Follow the Star treasure trail. So what you can do is we will provide you with a map and we'll provide you with a sheet to write your answers on and you can follow the Christmas story in and around certain houses in Rainy. There's eight stations to go to, eight star stations, and you can check them all out either on foot or on a car ride. So four of them are on foot in a treasure trail round the, down, the, down the hill in Rayleigh and four of them on a car ride which is up the hill in Rayleigh on the top of the hill and you can find all those out from the map and from the story. You can follow that round and once you've found out there's the other following eight letters to add to the ninth letter you've already been given, you can work out what the Christmassy word is and you can win a prize if you correct by posting that through the door of the last station or you can text us or you can email us with your answer and if you're correct we'll send you a prize. That's moved on quite a bit. We're now up to £1,700. Uh, so we're still buying the the, uh, the vouchers. If you know of anyone that could do with the Smith's toy voucher for Christmas, we have a few spare. Uh, so thank you so much for that. It's the money, even the money's coming today. Even I've had, today I've had more money, which is fantastic. Uh, so it's just amazing. We've decided to do this uh, special Christmas campaign to give some Smith's toy vouchers to the Grow Baby crowd and anybody else that would need a boost this Christmas. Click. Uh, we talked about being the bridge, so this is another of the uh, issues. Uh, I've just been talking about this this morning, actually, with somebody. Uh, this is number 14, so tips to bridging that gap between uh, the races in our country. Don't forget, racism is a white problem. I created and sustained it, that's me. I created and sustained it to a certain extent, and now it's my job to dismantle it. Only by the grace and mercy of God are people of colour willing to walk this road with us toward racial healing and reconciliation. Honour that reality in how you treat those with whom you want to build bridges. So it's up to me to build that bridge and to cross it to people who are disadvantaged in my country because of uh, race issues and diversity issues. Click. <coughs> Real Faith is on Wednesday. That's online with Zoom uh, with Morwenna and the gang. They're looking at uh, modern films from a faith perspective. Click. And Friday is the final youth event, DTI Christmas broadcast. Not quite sure if that's online or in person. Have we, just, we haven't decided yet, have we? If we're meeting up or if that's online. You have decided. Okay, cool. We'll let the, let the parents know what the decision is on that. Click. Uh, next Sunday, outdoor carols. If the weather allows us to, even if it's raining, we'll just have a, you know, you can stand under an umbrella and sing some carols. You can actually sing out loud outside carols. The, the government have allowed that, which is fantastic. Uh, and click. Hands up. Anyone recognize that guy? More winner. Lewis Hamilton. Well done. Come and collect your prize. It's Lewis Hamilton. Who, if he doesn't win sports personality, I will just cry because it's so obvious to me. Click. Uh, 
And we are now into Christmas talks. Let me find the one I was looking at earlier. There it is. So uh, last week, click, we talked about, this is my Christmas top 10. So we talked about Christmas presents. I love buying Christmas presents. I love Christmas shopping. Number nine was all the, all the nasty things about Christmas. I was just thinking today, the nativity story. When they got to Bethlehem, how did they eat? What did they have much? Did they, did they have enough money to, to, to feed themselves? What did they do? Uh, just all the nasty things about uh, Christmas. I get a little bit too wrapped up in that because it's a really gruesome story. Uh, click. Number eight, Three Wise Men. I love the whole thing about the star. Uh, number seven, Christmas songs. My favourite is Stop the Cavalry by Jonah Louis. Click. Number six, Christmas films. Don't you just love a Christmas film? My three favourite Christmas films, uh, Muppet Christmas Carol. I absolutely adore the Muppets, and I absolutely adore Muppet Christmas Carol. They've just found a new song they didn't include in the original uh, uh, original film, original production, and I think they've inserted it for Christmas. So if you're watching the Muppet Christmas Carol, there may be an extra song in there somewhere. Uh, they're, they're, my second favourite Christmas uh, film is Elf with Will Ferrell because it just makes me laugh so much. He's just so goofy. But this is my number one Christmas favourite film. If you've not seen it, it's a wonderful story about a guy who um, does loads of good things in his life, then it all comes crumbling down. Uh, in one night, because he loses a big amount of money that he was supposed to be banking, or his he's, uh, his uh, father-in-law was supposed to be banking, uh, and it, oh, his whole empire starts to crumble. His great empire that he's built up, um, and he decides he doesn't want to live anymore. He, he's rather he hadn't been born, and the whole film hinges on the fact that he hasn't been born. What would life have been like if he hadn't have been born? Uh, now it's, it's got a very interesting ori origin. This this story, because originally the story was a Christmas card. So the guy that wrote the story, uh, Philip Van Doren Stern, uh, wrote the story called, it's called, the original story is called The Greatest Gift, and he sent it out, he was trying to get publicity for it, and he sent it out as a 21-page long Christmas card, so a little booklet as a Christmas card. Um, it's quite similar as a story in Construction to Ebenezer Scrooge, where it's all bad and then it turns good at the end. Uh, but Jamie Stewart, Jim, uh, Jimmy Stewart, which is this guy here, uh, he wasn't originally supposed to be in the film. It was supposed to be Cary Grant. It was written for Cary Grant to play the role, but somehow the screenplay got into onto Jimmy Stewart's desk. Uh, Jimmy Stewart was a decorated war hero. It was just after the war, this was. Uh, but he didn't think he was a very good actor. Uh, and ironically, the baddie in the film, uh, which is, uh, I think his name's Potter, uh, the baddie in the film, who the, the actor in real life persuaded Jimmy Stewart to take the role because he thought he was so good. So he was good, although he's bad in the film. When it was released, the FBI were very, very nervous about it because they thought it portrayed bankers in a bad light and they thought it would encourage communism. It was all kind of the reds under the bed kind of era in America. Because the film initially so bad, it did so badly at the box office. So it was a really, it was a real, it bombed when it first came out. Um, they became less worried because it wasn't actually that kind of a series of film at the time. It took 30 years for the film to become popular when it appeared on TV in the 1970s, and that's when it really took off. The main three actors, so Jimmy Stewart, Donna Reed, and the guy that played uh, the Potter guy, um, they all called it their favourite film they'd ever done. Uh, it was filmed, well, that's a Christmas film, it was filmed during a heat wave. Uh, to make the snow in a heat wave... They, um, they actually, they emptied a load of foam from fire extinguishers. So when you see his hair being kind of with snow on it and everything, it's actually foam from a fire extinguisher. Before this, this is the first time they'd used foam for a film to create snow. Before that, they actually used to use cornflakes, paint them white and just chuck them on the ground so that when, you when an actor stood on them, it sounded like you were crunching through snow. That's what they do in, in the older films before 1946. Now, in the top 100 American Film Institute film heroes, so they voted for their top 100 characters, Jimmy Stewart is number nine on the list. So he's the ninth most popular uh, film hero in America. Who do you think number one is? Any idea? Who do you think will be the number one film hero? Any suggestions? Huh? Ben Crosby? No, no. Cary Grant? No, no. It's actually Gregory Peck, Atticus Finch from To Kill a Mockingbird. That's the number one on the list. Now, Mr. Potter, who's this guy's nemesis, so the baddie in the film, on the number one list of, uh, number 10, sorry, the top 100 list of movie baddies, 
Mr. Potter is number six on the list. So he made it higher in the baddies list than Jimmy Stewart made it in the goodies list. Who do you think is the number one ca film character on the baddies list? Who do you think is the worst portrayed character ever in a film? Any guesses? Huh? Voldemort? No, no. It's actually Hannibal Lecter is number one from Silence of the Lambs. Now, there's reasons why I like this film, apart from the fact that it's a great, great story. Uh, click. It reminds me of Isaiah 55. Kindness wins out in the end. It's the one thing I love about Hollywood is that kindness wins out in the end. It's a little bit of a schmaltzy way of doing it, in that films always end with the, the goody winning the, and the baddie doing something, you know, either dying or whatever. But kindness wins out in the end. Isaiah 55 says, as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. This is God speaking. So the words that go out from God's mouth, uh, so they actually they bud and they flourish and they yield seed. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace and the mountains and hills will burst into song before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. So the word of God here, he talks about the word of God. This is God saying his words don't come back to him without kind of like achieving what they, what they set out for. The words of God mean the promises of God, the kindness of God, the things that we love to hear him say. But he didn't just, you know, stand up from the, uh, on the clouds in heaven and shout them down. He didn't shout his promises down. He didn't kind of like be kind from a distance. He sent an actual messenger rather than just sending a message. Someone comes with a purpose to our earth, which is what Christmas is all about. Kindness is a person, just like George Bailey in the film, it's a wonderful life. Someone comes with a purpose. I react quite strongly when I get like kind of those computerized voices on phones or you know it says an un unidentified item in the bagging area, that kind of thing. It's like, you know, it's thinking, yeah, I just want to hear someone's voice. I don't want to hear it's kind of a, a robot kind of telling me what, what I can and can't do. And I think it's that whole thing about, you know, it's, it's, we, want to, we want the personal touch, don't we? And Christmas is about the personal touch. God just doesn't send a, you know, a Christmas card from heaven saying, be good, and I'll come back in a few years' time. Nope, he comes in person. Jesus is God. God in human form. Jesus, the Son, is God in human form. So then I'm left with questions like, well, does that mean he's kind of half man and half God? If he came as a human, did he stop being God? Is he all man? Is he half man? Is he half God? But the Bible tells us quite clearly that he's fully man, and fully God. So he's fully a man, a human being, and he's fully God. He's still a human being in heaven. He's still, he became a human being. He didn't go back to being what he was. He's now fully man and fully God. And we don't quite understand how that works. We don't quite understand how that's possible to get kind of like, you know, me as a divine being and me as a human with all my humanness. But Jesus managed that. But then again, you know, I don't understand the process of photosynthesis, synthesis, but I still enjoy flowers i don't understand how they grow or how when you stick seeds in the ground three months later there's a daffodil it doesn't make any sense to me but i, I enjoy it anyway and it's the same with that with god i don't fully understand how he can be fully man and fully god but i can still enjoy the fact that he is jesus brings the promises of god to us and therefore we can bring the promises of god to others jesus brings it to us fills us with the holy spirit and then we can go out and do that to other people I've had a number of conversations, interestingly, this week around the subject of do I really make a difference in the lives of those around me? Am I really kind of cutting it? Is this kind of like, you know, is there, is there a purpose to my life? And it's a wonderful life. The film is all about seeing what life will be like if you were never born. It's exactly the same story as Shrek Forever After. There are other stories around as well. You can, you can fit other kind of like stories into this kind of film, uh, film idea. But it's the idea of, you know, if he, if he hadn't been around, what would his life have been like? And this, the film gets darker and darker and darker as you see what, what would have happened if George Bailey's kindness hadn't been in the town he was in. I think it's Bedford Falls, the town, isn't it? It's a Wonderful Life finishes with Heart the Held Angels Sing. Uh, more about that in a sec. That's also on my list. 
Uh, but I'm going to carry on now. Click. Brilliant. Five and four, if I can find them on my list. It's because I'm going backwards. I've done this from like one to ten, and I'm actually doing ten to a one. So I'm going backwards. Number five, Christmas Eve. I absolutely adore Christmas Eve. It's one of my favourite days of the year, if not the most famous day. You know, the, 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 the nativity we normally do, which you can't do this year, you know, on that, Christ, on that day, we used to do it on Christmas Eve uh, with the kids. So much stress, but so much fun. It was so worth it by the end of it because it was such a laugh. Uh, the, I love the, the Channel 4 programme, The Snowman, which is a Christmas Eve classic. The kind of the expectation around Christmas Eve. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I used to go to church, midnight mass, like in an Anglican church or a Catholic church. I and mean, it, it is the most boring service of the year. This communion that I went to, I used to be a choir boy. The communion I went to, it just went on and on and on. And it's like, it starts about 11 o'clock and then by 12.30 you're thinking, you know, I just want to kind of die now because this is so boring. And it's all about communion. It's all the words and the thinking, you know. But it's just that whole expectation. It kind of made, it made the expectation even greater that the following day was going to be so exciting. We love getting presents for Christmas. We love giving presents to uh, seeing joy on people's faces. And Christmas Eve is just that expectation that tomorrow will be a better day. And what better year do you need to know that tomorrow will be a better day? It's the one day of the year, possibly with the exception of your day before your birthday, when potentiality is at its highest, isn't it? The, it's the, what, we, what we're hoping will happen the following day is at its highest. God saves the best till last tomorrow is always better than today in the kingdom of god why i hear you ask because we're closer to seeing god's final solution god's final purpose happen we're closer to the end of the world we're closer to heaven one day closer we have more we have more wisdom tomorrow than today things i learned today i didn't know yesterday but tomorrow i will be able to muse on those things so my wisdom increases more people will believe become christians by tomorrow so on average, in China, 10,000 people per day become Christians. That's the rate people are becoming Christians in China. I mean, 10,000 people per day. That's a quarter the size of Rayleigh. 10,000 people a day. That's just, that's just one country across the world who are becoming Christians. So since I've been talking this morning, seven people per minute in China, in China alone, have decided to follow Jesus. <coughs> uh, how long have I been talking for? So, uh, ten, so it's at least 70, isn't it? If I'm picking 10 minutes, that's 70 people in China have become Christians since I've been talking this morning. That is, they are phenomenal statistics, aren't they? That's just in China. And there are revivals going on today in Argentina, in Colombia, Venezuela, Brazil, Nigeria, India, Indonesia. Indonesia. They're the places around the world that are actually just so many people becoming Christians. It hasn't happened here yet, but it will do one day. There will be a great increase. 35% of Indonesia is now born again Christian. That's 93 million Christians in one country. If there's one thing COVID is teaching us, it's look forward to tomorrow. It's not going to be as bad as today. And I love the fact that Christmas Eve allows us that expectation. Right, back was in my notes. Number four, parties. I love Christmas parties. It's a great excuse to be indulgent, isn't it? There's no guilt at a Christmas party. You don't have to worry about, you know, am I eating too much? Am I drinking too much? You've just got a great excuse, haven't you? <clears throat> the, the church sometimes comes across as a bit kind of like, not our church, but church generally, staid and boring. There's nothing boring about our church, believe you me, seven days a week. It's like just a roller coaster ride. And we've, as in here in Rayleigh Vineyard, we've worked hard to blow that myth out of the water that church is boring. I hope you agree that that's the case. If, if, if there's things you think we do that are boring, please tell me. But we like to create a yes culture that if you have an idea and it doesn't cost me any money, go ahead and do that. If it does cost me money, we'll talk about whether the budget allows for that. But especially at Christmas time, we want to say yes to what's going on. We used to be known, when we first started, we used to be known as the party church. Any excuse to throw a party, the Queen's Jubilee, our church birthday, Christmas, Easter, anything came along, England playing, um, grow baby, we'll have a party about anything. 
parties at Christmas time is probably my strongest positive childhood memory. I remember the parties we had as, as a kid, Christmas time. There was always a lot of tension in my family over the Christmas holidays, largely because we couldn't bear being together in the same room for so long. So, you know, one of those things. Um, but parties lifted that dark mood. Other people would come in from outside, relatives would come in and we'd have a party and everyone would be happy, we'd be singing and dancing and playing games and stuff. Um, and we often find, you know, that's the case in the Bible. Wherever Jesus went, there was a bit of a kerfuffle, there was a bit of a party. He was really a party person. Parties are open events, outward looking, welcoming, come in and join us, have fun with us. Think of the things that are accomplished at parties in the Bible. So a water into wine was at a, church, was at a wedding party. Zacchaeus becomes a follower and then there's a party in his house. Matthew, the tax collector, becomes a follower. There's a party in his house. The sinful woman gets transformed at a party in the Pharisee's house. The man on the mat who gets uh, taken by his four friends is he's, he's thrown into the midst of the house and gets healed. Lazarus comes back to life and they have a party. You know, Jairus' daughter comes back to life and they feed her and have a party. Why, why wouldn't you in those kind of situations? The Bible is full of parties. Christmas is full of parties. Just for one month of the year, if you can have a party, if you're with your family, if you're enjoying yourself, please have no guilt whatsoever about enjoying yourself over the next 13 days at least and then beyond that. Unfortunately, it seems like New Year is cancelled this year according to what the government was saying, but you can sure you can get together with some of your friends and have a great time. So please use that as an excuse from your pastor. Right, going backwards... Click. Number three, Christmas carols. I absolutely adore Christmas carols. I have some favourites. You won't be surprised to hear. So my three favourites are A Little Town of Bethlehem. I love the, the tune. I love the way it goes. I love the words. Silent Night, I think he's just fantastic. I could, I could you know, I could get high on Silent Night uh, if I was that kind of person. But my number one Christmas carol, Heart of the Held Angels Sing, I just love the way it's constructed, and it's got a very interesting story behind it as well. Uh, so the original title, <laughs> this is quite a weird one, the original title was not Heart of the Held Angels Sing, the original titles was Hark How All the Welkin Rings, which I'm assuming you don't know what that means as well as me. It was the original words by Charles Wesley. Uh, so Charles Wesley was the brother of John Wesley, John started the Methodist Church movement way back in the 18th century, a great evangelist. So John was the speaker, Charles was the hymn, hymn writer, and they went about the whole of the country. Uh, any, every Methodist church, I think, they probably visited, um, and they, just, uh, had, they had a great revival across the country. They think that the revival that the Wesley started stopped us having a revolution like the French and the Americans had in their countries. They think there were so many Christians in this country that they didn't want to revolt because it was a real kind of worldwide, global thing about um, overthrowing uh, the kings and the queens and the monarchs. Uh, so the original title by Charles Wesley was Hark How All the World King Rings. Uh, I've got somewhere down there what that means. I'll to get to that in a sec. The original tune was to Christ the Lord is written to Risen Today, which is an Easter song, which is Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. That was the original tune, and they changed it to this. Because what, what songs get changed over the years, don't they? Uh, little bits get added. You know, when someone does like a cover version of a famous Beatles song or an ABBA song or whatever, then the words get slightly changed, the tune gets slightly changed. It was the same in those days. They would change things. Uh, click. So this is the first verse. Heart the held angels sing, glory to the newborn king. And it comes from Luke chapter 2. So it's a slightly, again, it's slightly changed what the Bible says. So what Wesley wrote, Charles Wesley wrote, is slightly different to what the Bible says. The Bible says, suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel. This is before the shepherds, when the shepherds came to the stable, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favour rests. Now, the words to the song don't quite go the same as that because he, said God, he says God and sinners reconciled here. And that's a bit that's slightly different because uh, they think it was, this was written quite soon after Charles and John uh, became uh, Christians. So they changed it into that. That's what they were feeling at the time, that they and God, they, they as sinners with God were reconciled. And it's a celebration that connects heaven and earth. This is the important thing about this carol. It connects heaven and earth. It brings a peace from heaven onto the earth. 
It's a strong theological statement. And sometimes we can listen to the words of these hymns and we think, oh, I'm not quite sure what that's saying. Is it from, is it from the Bible? This one is a really strong theme. God and sin is reconciled. It was a natural interpretation from what uh, Charles and uh, John had actually experienced. And it was first published under the title, Hymns for Christmas Day. It wasn't called that originally. It's called Hymn, Hymn for Christmas Day. So the original, type, the original first line was, Hark how all the welkins ring. Now, welkin is an archaic English term referring, referring to the sky. So how, hark how the sky rings was changed into Hark the Herald Angels Sing by George Whitfield, who was another of the famous preachers at that time. But it talks about her, heaven and earth being connected. The angels sing that the heaven, new, new, newborn king has come down to the earth. And this whole thing about three tiered universe that's the point behind this so there's three tiers to the universe so uh there is a heavenly tier so everything you hear about in heaven with the angels and god and the holy spirit and jesus everything that we don't see everything that we hear about in the bible and we can experience but we don't actually see with our eyes unless you see an angel appear and then the third tier Everything on earth, everything we see naturally, so the, the walls and the wind and everything about us that happens naturally obeys the laws of physics and everything that Einstein and Newton and Stephen Hawking have taught us about physics, everything that obeys those rules. And the tear in the middle is where those two cross. Now, this is really important to Christians that we recognize that we, we um, function in that middle tier. So we're not in the bottom tier where there's, oh, I shouldn't really use the word tier, should I? Should I should have changed that completely? We're not in the bottom tier where we're talking about, you know, just human stuff where we can just see and feel and touch everything. There are five senses. And we're not in the top tier in heaven where God lives with the angels and everything. We're in the middle tier where the two actually collide and come together. A bit like a Venn diagram where the two circles intersect and we're with a bit in the middle. That's how we function with things like healings, with prophecies, with uh, singing worship, speaking in tongues. All the things that we do that are beyond our human and our physical experience that's what happens in the middle tier. But we live in that middle tier. And every now and then we drop into that bottom tier and we kind of like, we function on like a, a human and on a kind of a physical level. And life goes a bit stale and it gets a bit boring, that kind of stuff. God wants us to live in that middle bit where he and us interact, where Jesus kind of interacts with us. So that's what the, the carol is telling us, that heaven came down to earth and the, the shepherds started to live in that middle tier with the kings and Mary and Joseph and everybody else that was affected by it. Of course, nowhere in the Bible does it use this word. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that the angels sang. It just says they were very, very loud. <laughs> uh, obviously, it's not a COVID uh, you know, year in Bethlehem at the time. They were very, very loud. But it does allow us to let rip in church at Christmas time. So we couldn't do it today, but next week we can do this. We can actually let rip at Christmas time. We can join in with the angels, as one day we will do soon in heaven. We will recognise that. And I want to, it's a bit like saying, what, you know, what, what is your favourite song? What is the song that you most, sing in, most love singing the most? So it might be a pop song, it might be a, a Jesus song, it might be anything that kind of like you think, oh, that makes me feel really, really good. That's what it's going to be like in heaven. He's singing that song over and over and over again and not getting tired, tired about it. That, that feeling about this makes me feel really good. I'm really connecting with the music. I'm connecting with what God's saying to this through me. That's what heaven's going to be like, singing that over and over again. And this is what this carol is trying to bring into our experience. And we're going to do that this morning. We're going to sing it. Do you want to come and join me? Next week, we're outside. We'll do number two, number one. And we will finish my Christmas top ten. Why don't you stand up and we'll pray. Lord, this morning we've been in that middle tier, the, where, the, where the circles overlap, Lord, where heaven and earth overlap, and we just rest in that place this morning. We rest in that place where heaven and earth
collide, meet, overlap, inter, interlock. Where we can feel you, where we can see you with our inner eyes, where we can touch you, where we can love you, where we can taste you, where we can smell the aroma of heaven. Okay, so we're now all in that middle tier, that middle zone. Just as you worship God, as you recognize what he did at Christmas, just bringing heaven to surround you as you rise up. 
closer to him. Come, Holy Spirit. Whether you're on Zoom, whether you're here live, just rest in God. Just let his peace settle on you. Peace and rest have been such vital qualities this year, haven't they? Just with all the anxiety, with the worry, with the uh, stress and the despair. Some of you still receiving, some of you still in that place. Even though it's a bit of background noise, there's no hurry this morning. We've still got six minutes to enjoy this. I would really implore that you just press into this this week. Press into this middle section where the, where the circles dissect. It's okay to live in that section all the time. That's what he wants, is to be surrounded, us to be surrounded by his power, by his love, by his rest, by his peace, by his joy. And whether that's a, a glass of wine in your hand or a Bible, it really doesn't matter. Whether you're partying, whether you're worshipping, you can still be in that section. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we bless everything you said to us this morning, everything you've brought before us, all the ideas that are not out of, 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 of you, Lord, for us, we just discard, and anything that was really meant something to us this morning, we take that into our week, Jesus. We grab onto that. We, we, we lovingly embrace you and just the purpose you brought, the message you brought and the messenger that you sent with it. We embrace Jesus this morning and carry him into our week and stick closely to him. Amen. That's the quietest entrance I've ever seen from a group of kids. <laughs> that was amazing. Well done. Even Annabelle went up to the stage. She wasn't screaming. So thanks, guys. Thank you for being with us. Uh, again, we've, it's a pretty quick exit today. We've got three minutes to get out of the building before we start breaking the law. I do apologise. If you could put all the stuff back in the boxes, the kids' boxes, put them back on the chairs at the back, that would be fantastic. If you've not written your name on the box, your family name, uh, please do that because they need to be specific for your family as we go through the last few weeks and months of this uh, dreadful COVID thing. And then uh, if you want to chat with people, please do that in the car park outside. Um, please make sure that you take everything with you. If you can wipe down your chairs, that'll be fantastic. As uh, it'll be less than 24 hours before some of the kids sit on them and swaying. Thank you so much for coming. We love you. We miss you. We'll see you on Zoom hopefully this week or next week here for Carols. And goodbye to all you Zoomers. Thank you for joining us this morning. We'll see you soon.
。